Good evening, everyone. Welcome you all to the phase one of Robotrix 2021. Today, we are going to conduct the first webinar, Introduction to Robot Simulation Software, organized by IEEE Robotics and Automation Society, the student chapter of University of Peradenia. You'll be able to get a good knowledge today on Vbots, a commonly used open source software nowadays for uh, robot simulations. Consequently, we're planning to conduct two more webinars in this phase on introduction to robot control and path planning and robot simulation in Vbot environment. So join us with these upcoming webinars as well to get an extensive knowledge and sharpen up your talents on your way to become experts in robotics and automation. In addition, we'll be uh, conducting the task uh, round one of a robotics competition in which you'll be able to participate while you're at home and show your talents. Don't hesitate to uh, grab this opportunity, not only to broaden up your knowledge, but also to earn a valuable certificate. So for now, you must be very excited for today's session. So without any further ado, let me introduce our today's uh, guest speaker for today's session, Dr. Nalin Harish Chandra, a senior lecturer in the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, University of Peradeniya, who is a PhD degree holder in computer science from KDH, Sweden. Previously, he was a researcher in the Department of Biological Cybernetics at University of Belfast in Germany. His interests are mainly concentrated in biorobotics, biomechanical simulation of locomotive control, dynamics of sensory mode integration, and many more. Sir, I warmly welcome you to our today's session. So, without any further delay, I cordially invite Dr. Nalin Harish Chandra to carry on the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Madhuan. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We, have, yeah. uh, sir, we can you. hear you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. So let me first share. Okay, so can you see the screen? We can see it. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for inviting me uh, to do the first uh, introduction to uh, the, uh, the robot simulation. And especially thanks for organizing this event because, uh, and, and also giving priority for simulations as well. Most of, the, most of the cases, the, uh, when you introduce, when you organize an event about robotics, uh, usually they forgot about simulations. So why do we need simulations? So let me start with uh, uh, the asking question. So why do we need simulations? The simulations in robotics, especially, is important. Uh, it is not only to, uh, robotics, but also it is important for other uh, uh, engineering fields as well. Not only engineering, but the other fields as well. But specifically specifically for robotics. So this is a kind of a visualization, planning and strategic tool. So it is important a research tool that we can use to uh, use for uh, kind of proof of concepts or, or, or proof of design. And also we can, by using, uh, by starting with uh, simulation, you can specially reduce the uh, integration cost for, of processing, especially when you device a, a robotic device. So you need to do the controller, design the controller. And you know that these robotics these, uh, devices are specifically, they are very expensive and they are very delicate. If you have one such uh, robot in, in your hand, so without putting your control, controller directly into that and testing, so you can simulate it by having a very good simulator, you can realistically simulate the, the same robot in a simulation environment, and then you can put your control onto that, the, the, the simulation model, and then you can test it before 
putting porting that into the real robot. In that way, you gain, uh, you will reduce the, the damage that you can do to the uh, to the robot if you first hand if you go uh, your first trial go with the uh, real hardware. Okay, so that's a very important way to uh, uh, start with. So therefore, simulations are very very important, especially for robots. And mostly, this is being used for analysis of uh, kinetics or the dynamics. And uh, of course, you can do offline programming, and you can test your control algorithms. You can in incorporate different different uh, control optimization technologies. And the good thing is that if you devise, uh, if you create a one model for your your robot, then you can simultaneously create multiple of robots, and then you can use for not only for con controlling one robot, but even though you have re re in real hardware, you have one robot, but you can create in the simulation several of multiples of them, and then you can uh, uh, investigate about uh, how they how they interaction. How so? Especially you can study for multi-agent systems as well. Okay, so so uh, so that's a very basic introduction to why do we need simulation. So let me start with the the outline today. That what I am going to uh, introduce. So the first I will discuss about what is Webox. Excuse okay. me, sir. Yeah. Sorry. Excuse me, sir. Uh, sir, can yeah. you switch off the video optimization uh, because uh, I think the slides okay. are not very much clear. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I should stop and go back. Come back. Is it? Yeah. Okay. How about now? That's good. It's okay now. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. So, so yeah. So let's continue. So I hope you can see it uh, clearly. So the outline. So I'm going to talk about what is the WebWorks. This is a very basic in introduction to the WebWorks. And uh, and then uh, of course if, if we are talking about WebWorks, I'm not good, not going to advertise here. Therefore, we need to talk about a little bit about. It. Just I will mention the alternatives to WebWorks. And of course, uh, the, the portfolio, so what they, the, their work is about and where they, the, this, is, this has been used. And then different features, the, the, if you compare with the others, so what are the features of the Webbox? And then what can we do with Webbox? And of course, what you should know uh, to start with. Okay? So the, I know that the, the audience will be of, from different categories, different levels of understanding or different levels of uh in the different fields so therefore uh, i will stick to very basics okay and then a little bit about web simulation software the user interface etc and then i will uh, briefly uh, will go through a couple of examples that i have done with the web software in using uh, some of the uh, projects okay okay so what is web so this is the symbol actually. So the, the, the ladybug is the, the trademark especially for them. And then it is an open source robot simulator. So that provides a complete development environment, model, program, and simulate robots specifically. So this will be used for the simulation of robots. And if they, they have the so it's it is now it is an open source. It was initially started. Uh, in 1996 by Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, EPFL. I happened to be there once. And then uh, actually, so this is a very uh, high level uh, uh, institutes that they, they do, especially for uh, work on robots. Okay. And then they, 1990, they formed the cyberbotics, uh, cyberbotics, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of foundation. And then they, up until 2018, it was uh, commercial software. But luckily, uh, after that, uh, from 2018, now it is free and open source. So therefore, we can uh, do a lot more with this one. So this, you can see that so it has a very hi good history, about uh, uh, 20, 20 plus uh, years. And then they have developed uh, from the beginning to the top level uh, simulators. And then they can compete with uh, mostly. Therefore, it's better to start uh, with this one because it, it has a, I mean, it, it 
can ask questions there are forums available so you can use uh, these those forums to understand you can put your questions of course then you can uh, get under uh, the uh, answers okay so therefore it's better to start uh, somewhat uh, high uh, top level uh, simulations of care when you start in the simulation first hand in first hand so just to mention a couple of alternatives to webots because gazebo this, this was the one uh, because this was free from the beginning so therefore most of the us uh, work with this one as well so but now we can do with the with the webots but we can do this soon so this is another simulation uh, software that can be used gazebo it is uh, uh, in a, you can use uh, especially for dynamic interaction with team objects so this has been used okay so you can and then there's another one the commonly maybe you have one maybe the, you have heard the vrep so now it is known as copiliasin so they have uh, changed the maybe they have uh, restructured their company whatsoever so now uh, it's known as copiliasin so this is also used for development of fast algorithms especially for uh, factory automation and then there's another one known as uh, Marilu Robotics Studio. So this is also a, a similar, similar dynamic environment, especially for simulate uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, robots. And at the same time, humanoids, for it, where you have larger degrees of freedom and the articulated arm. So these things, uh, we, so I can, uh, I, can, um, I can give these three as uh, alternatives to able. Okay, of course, there can be many more, of course. So, but anyway, so you can use this one as uh, these three as if you want to use, uh, uh, if you cannot somehow configure your robots, then you can try this one as well. And then there's a small video from them. I, let me try to share that. I think it should. Uh, I will stop share from this one. Let me share the video. Can you see the? So we can see the screen. Yeah. You can hear the sound as well. Yes, sir. So let's uh, have a look in the video. So this is uh, from them, their website. So you can see it uh, as an inspiration. So what you can do with this one. So we can do rapid prototyping. After designing the model, you can separately create the controller. So the part of the they have done is the industrial. I'm going to go. 
इस्तेमाल किया जाए Okay, so you can see, so I will stop the video now and then go back to the Okay, so can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay. So let's talk about uh, specific details of uh, the web of software. I, I hope you have seen the video, so you can clearly see that, what you can do with that. Okay, so it's very impressive, so they have done. So these are real uh, examples from them. Okay, so let's talk about uh, uh, some specific features of their software. So WebOps physics engine. Do you know what is physics engine? So there are a couple of available physics engines specific, 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 uh, specifically to simulate uh, the physics, laws of physics. Okay. So the one which is commonly available is the open dynamics engine. So the ODE, it is, it is known as ODE. So the WebOps is also based on this ODE, open dynamics engine. You can go to this website. So they have uh, the, this was first created by uh, Russell Smith. So he has uh, his uh, the, uh, the libraries. It libraries is coming with C, C++, and also it is coming with Python wrappers and all these uh, other languages as well. So if you want to use, if you want your own, create your own simulator, you can use this library to simulate rigid body dynamics because most of the robots will be rigid bodies. They will not deform with respect to application of forces okay so therefore we can use this library of course we can simulate the deformed version as well but mostly so this library is uh, commonly available and freely available it's open source for simulation of rigid body dynamics so the WebOS is also based on this one WebOS is using this library for their physics engine as well and uh, so other features are so so let's discuss. So that's basically what is important with this one is they have a very large collection of these robots. So these type of robots, it can be multi, uh, the mobile robots, leg robots, flying robots, swimming robots. So there are a lot of, uh, and also the specific, uh, special uh, available uh, um, commercial robots as well. Models of commercial robots are those, uh, all these humanoid robots and the, uh, and there, are, I know you know a lot of uh, available commercially available robots. So they are, they have model for most of the those as well. And then the sensors. So there are sensors uh, uh, for visual cameras and then laser laser driven sensors and the ultrasound. All these range finders. So there are a lot of collection of sensors you can use this. So therefore, you can incorporate these sensors into your simulate the the robot, and then you can. Uh, so these are real models, so the real counter examples for real sensors. Okay, so therefore it is important to have a, 
collection. So that's really simulate the real sensor counterparts. So there, and it is the, uh, in the webots, you, you can find a such collection. And then the actuators, actuators are motors, different type of motors will be there. So the linear actuators, rotational actu actuators. So these, uh, the model for these also available. And not only this, so the, to create a robot, of course you can, you can create your own robot using the, the, the simple geometric uh, blocks as well. But at the same time, you can, if you have a one, the real one, you can find the counterpart the, or, the, or the model, the, the, the realistic model, physics model as a robot node in the robots as well. And then the objects, that is important to uh, when you want to simulate the environment. So there are different types of objects you can create with this one. So these are the, and it, they have a very large collection of these robot sensors and actuators and objects. So in that way, so you can uh, uh, create a complete environment together with your robot as a model. Okay. And, uh, and of course you can program this with not only a single language, but there it supports a couple of more languages, especially C, C++, and these type of high, uh, uh, high level general purpose languages, Python, Java, I hope you, you might have a, at least one of these programs you are familiar with. So therefore, no, there's no specific language you can use. You can, so at least you can see here, yeah, I have set up six uh, different languages. So you can use, if you know one of these, you can create your model and the con specifically for the, the controller. The model will be created in the, in the specific uh, um, uh, syntax within the robots. The world will be created using nodes actually. I will briefly step that as well. But the controller can be written in different languages. So the C, C++, Python, Java, MATLAB, and uh, ROS, so that is also important because ROS is specifically used for, uh, it's an open source uh, rob robot software. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a middle, middle there. A, it has a collection of frameworks, application development supports, and, uh, and, then the, and also it has some operating system like uh, abstraction as a well, hardware abstraction and the package management. So therefore, and this, uh, this is being used for controlling the development of uh, controllers for robots uh, nowadays. So the ROS and the incorporate of ROS into the Webots. So there's a Webots ROS package as well, coming with the same uh, module, same installation. So you can use this directly to control, use the ROS uh, to control your robot. And, uh, and on the other hand, to interface with the TCP IP, so that's very, uh, very good because nowadays, so when you use the TCP IP, so you can control your, so, your robot remotely as well. So the, there's a remote control library using PIP. And uh, so of course, uh, this can be used to not only to, con uh, the controller can be spread in different nodes, okay, in the real time. So therefore you can, uh, your controller can be of different uh, processors using TCP IP, you can communicate for, specifically if you want to computationally expensive task, you can uh, forward that into different processors. Okay, and then you can get uh, communicate via TCP IP protocol, and then you can use that to control your real time, real hardware. So the, the good thing is that if you if you have uh, uh, the, assume that your robot you have written your to, in the real hardware, the real robot, the controller is written in Python, then then if you use the Python to uh, 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 to write the co code in the robot simulation in your environment, only thing is. You simply you can use the same controller. You can simply port that controller with slight uh, few modifications to the real hardware, so you can start working. Okay, so that's a good thing. So because the model is the, the same, the, the same model is in the simulation environment. The controller can directly port to the real hardware. And uh, so these are uh, specific. Uh, for robots, uh, uh, kind of what I can say. So the, the if you compare with the other simulation software, so uh, if you if I briefly give you the, the where these guys is being used for their portfolio. So these these are the industries they have been working with, and the most of the industry top level industry you can see that 
Honda, Samsung Zone, Huawei, and all these have been uh, worked with the uh, with, uh, they have their, their uh, uh, examples with these companies. Okay, so they have been used especially for Honda and uh, all these uh, companies. You can see that, and not, not only that, but on the academia, so the top level uh, universities in the world, Stanford, Harvard. Caltech, Google, so you can see that EPFL. So all these have been uh, uh, somehow in, uh, in 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 one way or the other have been worked with Webbox. Okay, they have published so many publications using Webbox in the sim in the simulation environment. Okay, and not only that, so you you project your own chain research projects. You can see that there are a couple of more. So these are a little bit old, but of course you can find a, a couple of more EU projects that has been based on robot simulation software as well. Okay, so they, they have been used to simulate uh, the, the robots with, uh, in, in the, in using these robots. So you can see the, so it is very good uh, to start with. So let's talk about a couple of more features. So the accurate physics simulation is a must when you do, when you, if you want to do a simulation, specific, especially for robots, so accurate physics simulation is a must. So as I mentioned, so this is the robots is using the ODE, Open Dynamics Engine, and they have extended it. And, uh, and of course they have, do, uh, they have done the calibration with respect to their real counterparts as well. So they have tested and, and then the models provided in the library, in the, in the robots coming with the, as an ex as examples or protonauts. So they are really, uh, they have tested with the real ones. So the controller given in the examples uh, directly can be used in the real uh, robots, okay? And so, uh, and, of, and also they have, uh, they have a lot of collection of robots. So we're covering all these, uh, covering land uh, and the, the water and also the air. So the, these, these robots, uh, you can have wheel robots, you can have articulated robots such as pneumonoids, et cetera. And then the flying robots and the swimming robots that will be salamander-like robots and then the modular robots. The modular robots are specially, they you know what is the, the, introduced by EPFL, I think. So they can have a couple of more uh, modules. They can, if you can program such that they can uh, come together and create different devices by uh, communicating with each, each each modular robot, so they can create a maybe a, a different animal with uh, with four, four four legs or six legs uh, time to time. They can communicate and they can restructure themselves. So this is also possible. Uh, there are available. Uh, 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 I mean, the examples or the, the real uh, counterpart models of these real robots are available in the robots environment. And as I mentioned, so they have a large collection of libraries of different robots, sensors, actuators, and objects. So these things are the important when you want to do a realistic 3D simulation. Okay? The dynamics should be covered, then dynamic is covered by the open dynamic engine. So it's quite accurate. So you can uh, uh, really re resemble the real dynamics in the, in the simulation environment. And the, uh, on the other hand, you can import the different models created in different uh, uh, software, especially for CAD models. You can import and also you can export. You can export to create movies, you can export to web interface as well. So, and also there are a lot of uh, import and export uh, um, possibilities. And other than that, it, they provide the application programming interface for different languages that I mentioned, C, C++, Python. And in the, in the, in the web, website, their website, you can see that they, they are given tutorials. So that, that's also one thing you can start with. When you do the tutorial, they provide the, for each of these, the codes, the simple codes for, 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 for most of the, the supporting languages, math, even for MATLAB as well. MATLAB, C, C++, Python, C. Or Java, all these codes are provided uh, as an example for, or as well. And of course, you can find the complete API for these uh, different languages. And it's multi platform. You can find, you can install it on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS as well. And they provide the, uh, the, all these instructions installing this onto, on a laptop or the desktop or the computer. Okay. So, so 
that's uh, those are the specific features of the uh, the webot the, we can um, we can talk about and let's talk about so what can we do with it of course now i i hope you can you are clear but we can do it that so we can simply uh, create robot prototyping so this can be used for academia research or else maybe industry you can create prototypes for assembly lines you can create uh, the you can use these available mo uh, rob mobile robots platforms for example if you want to create a such a cooker robot so if you have a model of a model of a arm robotic manipulator and 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 separate mobile manipulator you can combine these two to create another different types of different version of uh, the mobile manipulators okay so here this is a stationary manipulator and this is a mobile platform so if you put this here on this one so you can create a uh, different prototypes okay likewise you can combine these uh, available prototypes or you can create your own ones as well so this is being used for research and for industry as well and uh, and and specific, especially for the for the locomotion studies, so the, I I I am also going to this research area. So locomotion, in the sense, it's it's a movement. So locomotion can be swimming, locomotion can be walking, or locomotion can be a flying. All these can be simulated in the in the robots uh, simulation environment. So the special leg robots are available, and then humanoids and the quadrupeds and the, uh, the and also the uh, the drones. And the salamander like uh, the uh, swimming or crawling robots are available. Um, so, therefore, so we can do a lot of research uh, in this uh, environment as well. And uh, multi agent research, especially for swarm intelligence. So, as I mentioned, so if you create a one model, so you can create uh, multiple instances of that model. So, and then you can study the swarm, uh, the collaborative. Uh, targets so we can achieve collaborative targets using a goal directed uh, the goal oriented movement and also so you can create a this uh, the, the swarm uh, the, the, what's called the multi agent problem you can solve using this uh, and uh, analyze uh, using this software okay um, and uh, and also when you design the your controller so you can use generic algorithm neural networks artificial intelligence all these can be used and also you can uh, the controller can be of different places as well as i mentioned if you use the tcp ip protocol you can use the different processes at different high level maybe if you want to uh, run a very uh, deep learning neural network for your controller you can do that in a very high performance computer and then you can uh, communicate the results uh, with the uh, with the simulation environment separate request so you can use this uh, behavior for behavior research as well and uh, again uh, so this is spe uh, special and we can use as a lecturer so, so we can use this for uh, teaching as well so you can use uh, these lang uh, languages uh, different languages so at least you can pick a one and then you can use teaching robotics using one different uh, from that language, so the students can start the learning, and they are simple models, and this is being used for that purpose. And also the robotic competition. This is a one competition that we organized uh, last year, two, no, two years ago. Future pivots. I think uh, I'm happy to say that one uh, the the winners, a couple of winners, are here in our uh, department now. Actually, so we organized this uh, to introduce robots to the community and also. To, to get some essence of simulations in uh, for for robotics so this went uh, quite successful okay. Uh, okay so that's uh, what we can do with robots so you can see this there's a lot of this, this list continues okay so i just stop here but uh, then uh, let's talk about what do we need to know what do i need to know to start uh, the learning uh, or use robots so the basic knowledge of C, C++, Java, Python, or MATLAB. At least one of these will be enough for you to start to design the controllers. So the 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 most the, the this language is for to design the controller. If the controller is needed to after after this, after creating your model and the environment, the, then you need to somehow link 
you are con uh, the robot to the controller. So there's a possibility to link it that the controller can be written in one of these languages. I hope most of you will, at least will be uh, uh, will know one of these languages. So therefore, we can start it directly. Now, and if uh, if you want to do more, for example, if you want to create a nice rendering, nice re three or very complicated shapes of robots, then you need to you can do this with, uh, for example, if you know VRML or the, some uh, some some uh, knowledge about three D computer graphics, you can do this in different languages, especially for the VRML. Now it is X three D. You can import that into the robots very easily. So there's a possibility. So you can therefore you can create a very textured, very art, uh, complex shaped robots uh, models into your uh, simulation environment in webots. So for that, if you want that, then you need to know some uh, little bit about VRM as well. Otherwise, you can simply start with them. The programming of uh, webots itself is very easy. So let's talk about that. So the web uh, the webot simulation is based composed of these couple of items. The first one is the world. World is the robot where I use robot and the simulation environment. So it is known as the WBT file. So that defines one or several robots. So you can have one or several robots and their environment. Okay. So you can create different terrains. So usually it start with the, you can uh, start with the rectangular the normal flat surface, but of course you can create different, different, uh, as you can see, uh, as you saw in the video. So, so you can create different terrains, all these uh, uh, up, uh, and, the, and the different models in the, in the different robot models will comprise, will consist the world file. Okay, so that will, that create the world file. And uh, this sometimes depends on external proto, proto files means the proto is, uh, special, uh, this is used for to define new new models. For example, uh, as in you, if you create a if you create a robot for your own by using ge simple geometrics wheels and etc., then you can create a proto file of that. So the proto means in the sense that then it will be working as a model. For you can simply import or in initiate. You can simply uh, uh, add this proto file proto node as a robot to the model. So there's ways to create these files. So it's very simple. And this has been explained very nicely in the, uh, the website, in the user guide. So that, that can be uh, simply, uh, even the, the, these models, models available are proto files actually. So the available, the example of Puma, Puma robot or KUKA robot, these are proto files. You can simply import it and then um, uh, uh, remove the proto file, then you can access even uh, the more components there inside the original model as well. So therefore, so that can be done uh, in vice versa. You can create a proto model or, or else you can import a proto model and then you can unpack to get the, in, include more behavior, more function to the existing robot. Uh, and, uh, as I mentioned, so the one or several control programs is needed. So that's what you need. You need the world file. So the world file consists of, especially there are nodes to represent the, the gravity, the, the physics and, uh, and the viewpoint. And uh, so all these will be com uh, comprised this uh, WPT file, okay? And then the models of the robots as well. And then you need to a controller. The controller can be written in different languages. And then you need to link the whatever the robots available in the, the world file to the controller. So then the then only it will uh, uh, working to, uh, to in, together with the in line with the controller. Otherwise, the two, two things will be at separate. So somehow you need to link. So the linking can be done very easily. You need to select the controller node and then you need to select the whatever the controller file. So that will link the controller to the corresponding robot of the environment. Okay, simulator. And there's an optional physics uh, plugin that can be used to modify the regular physics engine, physics behavior. So the physics uh, plugin is necessary. For example, uh, if you want to 
uh, what's it called? Uh, so if you want to uh, set different frictions at different levels, okay, different surfaces, you can do that using by, by, by modifying the physics plugin. And uh, so all lot, and also we can do, if you want, for example, if you want to do a hydrodynamic model, so the swimming, so the, if you want to inc include fluid dynamics, so then that can be done using this modification to the uh, uh, regular physics uh, engine. And also you can use aerodynamic model or the flying robots uh, by simply modifying this, by including uh, that uh, uh, concept into the physics plugin. Okay, so you can see that that you can do all, all these, uh, so you can simulate fluids, you can simulate uh, air, aerodynamics, uh, simply by modifying the existing or the environment using this plugin. Okay, so, so this is uh, uh, the, what, an example of the user interface. So you can see this is the screen. And in this, uh, after after opening the robots, you will, after opening a project as well, so there will be a three D view, so the three D window, so three D window in the mid middle, and then of course to create this, so the, here you can see that, so this is a kind of three D of your world. So the, to create the world, you need uh, you need to create nodes. So the world is basically consists of different nodes, and these nodes are can be seen in this scene tree. So the scene tree is a kind of explorer. You can see in the, all the all the Windows environment. So the, all the objects will be shown, all the robots will be shown, and all the properties can be accessed by going through the scene tree. So it is usually in the left, uh, right, left hand side of the to the 3D window. And then of course the controller. The controller is in the editor. So this is the editor. So the editor can the your controller can be written in the editor. So between the left to the 3D window point. And then the console. The console will basically output whatever the compiler outputs after after compiling, or else whatever the, uh, the outputs of the simulation you can see here. So that's the console. All so these four are the basic interface. Uh, the in the interface what you can the window different window panes, and of and and on top of that you can see the no, normal menu. So in the menu you can find all these uh, other information information as well. Mm. So, so this is uh, so all this information is clearly explained in the in the WebOx documentation that is freely available on the web. So I will give you the link towards the end of the presentation. But before that, I would like to. So this is uh, what I can say about the introduction to WebOx. It's very good, very important. Uh, the very I mean the, the top level simulation software that can be used for high level research, top level research, and also for top level uh, project development, okay? So, so let me show you a couple of examples, simple examples, simple, I mean, simple in the sense uh, uh, that uh, the controllers, etc. But of course, that can be complicated, you can make it complicated. So these are a couple of examples that I have been working with. And so this is uh, to uh, this is in the web environment, just to represent a stick insect. I hope you know what is a stick insect. Uh, the stick insect is the uh, Daria can sing in singles. I don't know, maybe you have it. So, so it is just to simulate the internal movement of that insect. Okay. So, it's a uh, pain. No. So, there's some problem with the uh, video. Anyway, so the idea is, so we can see that. So you have different uh, three joints to represent a single. So this is a real uh, stick insect model with the real data, real parameters. So you have three segments uh, actually for the, for the uh, antenna of this insect. So the antenna consists of three insects and then the rotation joints are different ones. And then we were trying to model the movement of this, uh, the antenna. So the antenna movements by, by uh, copying the real animal. So we have the data from the real uh, stick insect uh, uh, collected from Wiken system. And then, uh, and, and also the neuronal system, they have electrophysiology as well. So we try to incorporate this into a oscillator model. 
to how we can get it and then how we can use this information when they touch this, what, they, what will be the reaction likewise. So this has been thoroughly studied and this is being used as a use more paper for this uh, simulation as well. And then there's another one. So this is uh, the complete animal. So this is also a simulation. Okay, uh, bad luck, so it's not shown in the video. This is, no, it's step by step, but it is a complete video where the animal is moving and uh, climbing uh, steps. Okay, so this is also, you can see that each leg has three joints and the three segments, and uh, you can see the number of uh, degrees of freedom in the, the simulation, even though it's simple. So you can see it has six legs and also the two antenna with three segments all together, uh, six into three, 18 and 24, 24 degrees of freedom. And also the, the, the and two, uh, three more, three more degrees of freedom uh, in, in, along the body as well. So you have the head movement in the uh, left and right, and then there are a couple of uh, two, two three joints in the between as well. So this is being uh, simulated in the, in the same environment, and this has been used for different purposes, and it was used for in the in European project. Uh, so just to show you, just to get the information, how these these animals are nocturnal animals, and they cannot, they can see, they have they have eyes, but they cannot see very clearly. They see some some contrast only. Okay, so what happens when they move? Or they speci especially uh, react to these edges. And then what happens, we were studying what happens the, because the antenna is moving in front of them and the legs are also moving in front of them. What, ha what happens to their own movements? Okay, so the, these eyes will be somehow get the uh, movement of the antenna as well. So that's what happened to them. This has been biology, the neurophysiology studied and then we have been, used this model to study further with the, with the proper uh, retina model as well. And then, uh, so when this is, these two are for simulation studies, and then uh, there was another one. Let's start. Okay, no. okay so, so this is uh, the, the real robot, the Vidya, uh, uh, the robot name is Vidura. Okay, so this is the real robot with the two antennas we have implemented using the uh, uh, pan tilt unit. And also with the with the sensor mounted at the top of the uh, top top of the antenna, we have a vibration sensor. Then by by getting the vibration information, then we can decide the the the, the, the distance and the mat material of the object. Okay, so this is being initially we did with the with the. Uh, the bad, the bad thing is that I cannot uh, play this one. Oh, these are videos, okay? So you can see that this, uh, the antenna is moving like a real animal. And then of course we have mounted an omnidirectional camera to get the views. And then the, when the object is moving in here and there, so it can simply uh, target this antennal movement to the object. And then by touching after some time, then it, uh, initially the sampling the searching will be a large uh, uh, the elliptical movements, but when they touch it, then they reduce the number of steps, number of the amplitude, and then they, they, they are going to touch the, uh, the uh, around the object. This is the animal uh, that is, uh, this is also from the stick, animal, stick insect. And then we try to do that into the robot environment. So this is a simulation. And then we had the robot we directly put that into a real robot. Again, I think I will not be able to run it here, but possibly maybe I, I will run it uh, as separate files, not in the, if you want, okay? So, so that's a good thing is that if you do the simulation, it's very perfectly, then you can simply port it into the, without any hesitation, you can port that into the real robot, it will work. And this is the one from the EPFL, the Salamander, the first version of Salamander. And this is another that I have been involved. Of course, I have been in the Salamander assets. In Salamander, we had a, another new project, uh, Lampetra. So these are the models even uh, we did uh, for, the, for the swimming and the, with the fluid dynamics and, and also with the, uh, the walking because the Salamander can walk 
Salazar can swim and scroll. So all these can be simulated in the same environment as that. So unfortunately, I am not able to uh, run these videos, but let, 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 let us try to separate it. And so this is the, uh, to finish this off. So what you need to do is, if you want to study further, so you please go to the, their website, the cyberbotics.com, and then you can use this guide. So they are clearly explained all this information that is needed to start the simulation. Okay, so, so how, first you need to install the software. So it, it, it depends on the depends on the, the operating system that you are working with. So they are clearly explained how to do that. But installing is a, uh, quite a task as well. Uh, I should say that. And then uh, uh, how to incorporate different languages because if you are using the Python, MATLAB, all these uh, some uh, tricky things should be done. So you need to somehow link their compilers to the WebOps environment. That's clearly very clearly explained in the similar uh, in the user guide. So therefore, don't worry. So you can uh, if you follow correctly the the steps that is given in the web, uh, user guide, you can clearly get everything into work. And then they are provide the tutorials, the six tutorials. If you follow the six tutorials, then you can be after that, of course, after a couple of more training, you can be expert in this. Of course, I'm not an expert in the robots, but uh, if you if you uh, jump into the simulation uh, uh, environment, simulation model, and then of course you will end up. So you have to start. Uh, so this is the step you need, you need to do first do the model model can be done in the WebOps environment and the program program should be run so the api is given application program interface for different languages with all these commands are given how to communicate how to run and then you can even devise your own uh, controllers for your robots and then you can start the simulation and if it works if it not works you can go back and change your algorithm and then you somehow you can work the simulator simulation and then only you can go to the transfer that directly you can even use wireless communication to transfer your control of the report and uh, start the emulator okay so that's all actually uh, uh, i have planned for as the introduction to the robots so any question Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your knowledge and helping us to learn a lot about Webot simulation software. Uh, dear participants, please uh, give us your valuable uh, ideas to improve our sessions in future. Uh, fill in the feedback form uh, using the link which we have posted in the chat box. Now it's time for the Q&A session. Participants, it's your time. You can unmute yourself and ask your questions directly from our guest speaker to clarify your doubts, or else you can use the link which we have given to you in the chat box to post your questions. So the best thing to start is to go to the website and just try to get it installed. So because now it is free, so you need some space and then some powerful graphics as well. But anyway, you can uh, nowadays uh, most of the graphic cards are coming with uh, capabilities, the three D rendering, etc. So of course you can reduce the rendering as well in the in the in the menu. So you can select you can reduce the rendering capabilities the complexities. Even you can uh, reduce uh, not not to show shadowing, etc. And that way you can uh, speed up if something happened, it got crashed or something. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Uh, have our participants question? have posted a couple of questions. Uh -huh. um, okay. In the chat box. Mm -hmm. uh, no, sir. We have given ah. them a separate link okay, to post okay. their questions. Okay, okay. So, um, the first question says. Uh, is it possible to add CAD models designed by ourselves yeah. instead of library files? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it is possible to uh, CAD models. You can directly import them into the uh, robot's environment. And then, you, uh, uh, of course, the controller, you need to write it separately. But of course, there can be modifications. But the CAD models, you can directly import it. Import them. So this is key, uh, given in the, in the user guide how to import and going uh, the, and also uh, uh, exports as well. So you can export even to other, other some uh, CAD libraries as well. Yeah, that's possible. Uh, okay. Uh, is that enough to study only one programming language for programming for robotics? Uh, I know Python, but some seniors uh -huh. told me to study C. Is that necessary yeah. to study C? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the, it's one uh, for, for simulation side, it's okay. So you can start, with, you can go ahead with Python. But if you go into real hardware, then uh, it's better to uh, uh, either C or C++ have it. Because the Python, if you, if, if, uh, if you want to implement such certain things, so the Python is uh, theoretically the time taken to not for implementation, but to run. So you can make uh, if, uh, for with C, you can make it one second, and theoretically it will be thousand seconds for Python. So therefore, it's uh, if you want real-time applications, so of course you can use Python as well. But uh, but it's better to uh, you know a little bit of C and C plus as well. So it's not that hard. And uh, Python, it's if you know that's that's very good. So it's, uh, you can find a lot of uh, libraries connected to it, open open source libraries especially for robotics, uh, uh, even for machine learning. So you can incorporate those as well directly to the, your controller. Uh, but knowing C would be good if you are dealing with uh, ultimate real hardware. But if you can find us, uh, I mean, existing model, uh, Python library for your robot, then you are okay. Optimized version. Okay, uh, the third question says, uh, I like to study robotics. Uh, I know only Python. Is that master's study C programming language or is mm -hmm. Python only enough? I think it's the same question. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's, it's better to, I mean, see, yeah. I mean, to start with Python, okay. But then uh, somehow you will have to, so most of the, most of the, the hardware, they do work with uh, C or C++. Then you will, at least you need to know a basic knowledge in C, C++. Yeah. Uh, the next question says, what are the trending robotics topics in research areas? Yeah, so, the, so that's quite, a, uh, I mean, a common question that can ask. So there are a lot actually the, now uh, mostly so if I mention, so since I'm in the biorobotics, it's, it's quite trending. So the most of the time, what we can do is we can get the, because we know the biology, biology is first is, uh, is up to now. So they are the, we, we don't know, we can't even simulate, we can even emulate a robot that uh, walk uh, with, with a nice, uh, for example, if, if you see the cat move, movement of the cat, we cannot, we are not even uh, closer to the, uh, emulate a robot that can walk like a cat. Okay? So their efficiency and their different, uh, uh, what's the agileness. So the, all these should come through, through not only the, uh, not only the just a, a normal robot, but then we, we should be able to so take some uh, develop some algorithm based on these uh, inspired inspired from the animal's behavior and then we can use that into the the your controller and also especially the, the soft actu actuators uh, when, when it comes to uh, we can include this damping behavior using muscle models muscle like behavior into the controller so that's the kind of emergent uh, area bio robotics and then, uh, then the machine learning driven robotics especially the uh, using vision, the camera, and all these can be used for grasping different uh, uh, information. And then you can use the machine learning techniques to develop or optimize your control algorithm, then put that into, into your robot controller. So that is the machine learning AI-driven robotics. 
and the, or the under voucher or and then the un, uh, unmanned devices like all these autonomous robots are coming to play and of course there are different different areas such as humanoids and then then the wire especially for the surgical that where you need the high precision uh, robotics control so that's another area and uh, the industrial robots that's also evolving these days but i i would say that uh, mostly machine driven ai driven uh, control for robots is the kind of emerging area now it's And of course, okay. they are biomimetic and bio, uh, bio uh, inspired robots as well. Yeah. Uh, next question um, Can we use VBOTs with ROAs? Uh, that's a good question. I think, uh, uh, that I don't know exactly the answer, but I think it's possible. Yeah. I'd uh, say, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, next question, uh, should we know object-oriented programming concepts in Python or Java for VBOT programming? Uh, I think it's good to know the object-oriented programming, not for even for, not for, uh, for, not only for VBOTs, but for the others as well. Because in that way, especially Python is also structured in that way. So you can start with the, the object-oriented programming, then you can simply create a uh, in a high, hierarchical manner, and you can you can create the class-based uh, structure that has been used. So so it's better to uh, use that way. So then it's clear for you to understand the when it goes to, for example, here even the nodes that is created uh, going to create in the WebOps environment, you can think of as objects. So the one node, it, it is a kind of object. So it has the properties inside. It has the connection from one to the other. So they, this, this diagram, hierarchical diagram will be there. So you will start with the body with the first node and then you connect, for example, in, in, a, in a four wheeled robot. So the, the main body will be the first node and then the four wheels will be another node. And these nodes are kind of objects. And then these are represented in the, in the program, in the, in the WebOps, uh, the world file is also kind of uh, object oriented manner. So the properties are there. These properties can be accessed uh, through the, from the controller, like right. So it's good to start uh, the uh, use the uh, object oriented programming techniques. Okay. Uh, the next question asks: uh, Don't we need Arduino and other languages for programming robots? But in VBots, uh, don't uh, won't it be a problem when we use Java, C, etc. for programming the simulators? Uh, Arduino, that's that's basically it's kind of a C version, but it's different. But uh, the good, uh, mostly it's for small robots because this VBOT is especially especially used for the top level robots. That's so that uh, and the, well, you need the, the high level uh, control capabilities, etc. So therefore, that's why maybe they haven't provided any interface or the API for that language, but they are providing the API for the, the most common languages, so C, C++, Java, Python, and, uh, and MATLAB. So the MATLAB is also can be used to real-time control, because this should be somehow go to real-time. And uh, uh, one of these would be enough. I mean, for the, they are not providing Arduino. I think it's uh, it's 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 not going to use with the top level robots. That's I think as the initial projects we can use it, but anyway, they can be used. They, they, maybe they are using high level top level controllers as well. But uh, to start with, I think the what the, the, uh, the maybe that's why they do not provide a, such interface for that. But of course, they do provide for Java. Am I uh, okay. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, the next question: um, Which language most uh, is most preferable for robots? <laughs> that, uh, as I mentioned, so you cannot say exactly. Uh, the robots. So the uh, language. Uh, so C, C plus plus. I can. I. And Python. I would say. 
because it's available, uh, the available freely and then also available with the, uh, the combined the li libraries. Of course, if you know something in C, C++, you can somehow create your own wrapper to that library for Python. So therefore, there are inter interconnection as, as well. So they can create a wrapper to the existing C or C++ library, then to the Python, and then you can use the Python only. So, 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 they, so there, there's no specific uh, uh, language for robots, but it's better to know uh, at least uh, start with the ROS as well. So it's another program like that, but it's a kind of a middleware. So it's like a operating system, but it's uh, it's like a programming language as well. So it's it's better to uh, at least get hands on with ROS, ROS package, ROS robot operating system, but it is not an operating system. It's a, it's a kind of middleware. Okay. So I uh, cannot say specifically this this language is preferred the other. I can say that. So it's your uh, passion. Yeah? Uh, okay, so um, the next question uh, says, more than this software, can you tell me some ways to develop my knowledge about robotics? What things I have to study in order to become a robotics engineer? Mm -hmm. That's a good question, actually. So, so, of course, there are a lot of available resources in the internet uh, in robotics. So, the good thing is maybe... Uh, uh, you can search in the internet. There are a couple of good uh, texts as well. And uh, a lot of maths knowledge is also necessary, especially when you do, uh, these are dynamics, okay? So the dynamics, and you, you need to know basic knowledge of inverse kinematics kind and the dynamics. So these two, first you need to have grab that information, uh, that knowledge about in, uh, forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, and dynamics dynamics and inverse dynamics these four you should know very well and then the control theory so the control uh, con how to define the control feedback control likewise so the, these are the basic concepts that is needed to uh, create a uh, to run a robot okay the, the mechanical of course you can create your robot in different ways the controller then the control is the problem so when you when you want to control and when you want to of course the simulate you need to clearly understand the dynamics of it, okay? So then uh, you need to know the control theory, little bit of control theory as well, and then the, the mathematics, a lot of mathematics. Of course, you can find resources in the internet if you simply Google, and then there are free courses in even in MIT, open source co course there. You can find uh, course-related materials as well. Uh, next question, uh, can we use libraries like OpenCV in control programming when using yeah. Python language when we are creating code for the robot in VBots? Yes, that's possible. And even there are a couple of examples using OpenCV and there are OpenCVs directly, the Python wrappers as well. So especially these uh, the, the examples in the VBots, if you go to the VBots, if you run the VBots, then there are a guided tour. So in guided tour, you have a lot of uh, maybe uh, uh, 10 or 20 examples with different uh, devices. So there are devices that is using kind, uh, Kinex, the, the, the devices using, using color, color uh, recognition uh, devices and also the examples. And all these examples, so they are using the OpenCV for, for the purposes, okay? So the range finding, uh, record, object recognition, and, they, and all these uh, camera related. The, there are, with, with, the, with the codes, you can uh, uh, get uh, get an idea how to do that in the in the in the robots environment. That's possible. And there, in the if you install robots complete uh, uh, installation, then you will get uh, these examples as well. So then you can dig them to get it more get more knowledge. Yeah, that's possible. Um. Okay, so, uh, the next question asks, uh, can we use external sources like the online databases in VBOTS? Uh, that I think possible, I, do, I cannot say exactly, but I think it's possible. 
database, uh, the database because if it is uh, the TCP IP controls, then of course definitely you should be able to uh, handle the other databases through the this protocol as well. So there should be possibility, but uh, I don't know. I haven't done, but uh, uh, surely it should be possible. Uh, the next question says, uh, I am studying electrical engineering in University of Maratua. Is it possible for me to do uh, MSc in robotics after BSc? Uh, yeah, in Maratua, oh, in here. So uh, in University of Maratua. Okay, so that, uh, that actually, I don't know exactly. So maybe you can go to the website and then you can see whether they, they are offering. Of course, there, there should be possibility to the robotics, uh, at least uh, maybe control. I don't know. I, I haven't I, any idea about that. But you can go to their website and look, have a look at what their curriculum is about. Uh, yeah, offering that. I don't know exactly. Thank you, Dr. Nalin Harish Chandra, for joining with us today and sharing your uh, valuable knowledge and uh, helping us to learn a lot about uh, robot simulation software. Uh, please accept this token of appreciation for joining uh, with us today in your busy schedule and helping and guiding us to learn a lot about robot software. Thank you. Thank you.